Hi, welcome to this SSRS tutorial video and today we're going to look at setting defaults for date parameters. So we're going to look at um, using expressions with functions like date add, date serial, date part um, and also quite a few other um, date related functions. We're also going to create a text box. We will um, add a date in there and, and do some formatting of the dates within a text box as well. So let's begin by creating a new parameter uh, I'm going to call it um, date parameter and it's going to be of type date um, nice and simple if I click on preview we should get a blank date parameter and I can select the date there if I want to now what I want to do though is I want this parameter to default to today so if I go to my default values and I go to specify value and I choose add and I click on the little fx, it takes me to this, this expression window, and I can type an expression here. So if I get rid of null, I'm going to type equals today. So any expression that you put in here needs to begin with equals. So I'm going to put equals today. And if I select that and click OK, preview it rather, it should have today's date in there. Now, let's say that I actually want to... Um, Put this to the to the start of the month. Well, let's go into here. Have a little look at some other options. Um, so we chose today, and we typed today in here. However, if I go down to common functions and date and time, you'll see in this item list here there is today as a function. Um, and when you select one of these functions here on the right hand side, you get a description of what it's going to do. And then you got you get like a, a, an example of use here. So today will return today's date. Now we will return today's date and time. So let's have a little look at that. If I just create a new parameter, I'm just going to call this text param. Um, I'm going to specify a date value to be shown here. So if I go to my Common function date and time. Um, I'm going to say now. And end brackets. Click OK. Click OK. And let's have a little look here now. I should have two parameters: one that's got today's date and one that's got today's date and time. So now let's go back to the text parameter and let's have a look at um, some other options in here. And all of this will kind of make it a little bit clearer when it comes to us building our own defaults. So. Coming back down here, we've got options of day, month, and at the very bottom, year, um, but the um, it's just hidden off the bottom of the list, but you can see it um, there as an example, year. What that does is, day, month, and year, if you select day to day, it will return the day part of a particular date. So the day of today is 17, it's the 17th of June. So I can say, um, show me the day element of today. And if I preview that, it'll return 17. Similarly, if I choose month or year, it'll return 6 or 2021. So now using that knowledge, let's go back to our date parameter. Let's go to our default values. And let's have a look at this expression. So instead of today, we're going to use something called date serial. And what date serial does is it allows us to build a date. We need to give it a year, a month and a day, and it will give us a date. So if I just double click on date serial, um, immediately it will say to you, give me a year, please. Now, knowing what we've just been looking at, we can use our year function. And we can say year today, and that will return for us 2021. And then if I now, because I want this to be the first of the current month, I'll say month today that will return me six and then I want it to be the first so I'll just put the number one in that should return for us the first of the current month beautiful so now let's think about what if I wanted it to be the first of last month so let's think about this um, I'm just going to let's open this again so I'm just going to take this 
and just copy it elsewhere. Now let's use something else now. We're going to use something called date add. Date add. And what date add does is it says, okay, give me a date. Tell me what you want to add or take away of and tell me kind of the um hold on let me, let me think you can use this to say i want to i want to take three days off today's date or give me two months off today's date or give me this date last year so take a year off today's date and the way it works is this so you say i want um let's say i want it to be um this time last month so i want it just to simply take a, a, a month off today's date so you say the interval you've got to put um a date interval honestly dot month and then comma this is the how many you want to plus or minus so if i want it to to go to last month that i can say minus one if i want the date to be it two months into the future i give it a plus two i don't need to put the plus the, the plus is um assumed if you put a minus then it knows it's minus otherwise it's plus and then you say from what date well today so if I do that, that should give me today's date less a month. So it should be the 17th of April. Um, sorry, of May. So let's try that. Okay. There we go, 17th of May. So now that we've got those two bits of of data, of, uh, of knowledge here that we've just worked out. So let me just put this down here. Uh, and copy the thing I took earlier on. So this is um, start of month, and this one is um, same but last month. Using that, if we can get to the start of the month, and then we can take a month off it, then surely it will be the start of last month. So let's try that. Let's begin with the start of the month. And then let's take a month off using this date add. So instead of it being today's date, we're going to take a month off this date here. So let's get rid of today's date. And let us put in this, which is the start of the month. Let's see if that works. I hope that's made sense. So we've, we've kind of took two bits and put it into one. Um, this bit here will return us a date that is the first of the current month. And this bit here that surrounds it will take a month off that date. So this should be the first of the fifth. Lovely. Look at that. Um, okay, now I do have... Um, yeah, let's look at so let's look at the, the the end of last month. So imagine, so I've got a date there. It's the start of um, last month. Let's think about um, creating a date default that's the end of last month. So you might have two defaults, a so to and a from, and you want it to be um, the last month range. So let's just change this to be um, start date and we know that's going to be the first of the fifth let's create a new parameter and it's going to be end date and we want this to be the end of last month okay so let's press it by click on here um so we're going to use date add again so we're going to use date add. And the way we do this is we say, okay, date add. I want to take away so many days. So we'll use date interval. Last time we did month, this time we'll do day. And what I want to do, if you think about it, what I want to do to get the start of last month is I want to take away all the days from this month. So right now it is the 17th day of this month. And I think I can get that um, by doing that. That will return me 17. Um, but what this is looking for is an interval. So it's looking for, oh, sorry, not day. It's looking for day. And it's looking for an interval, minus one, plus one, whatever. Let's say this is 17. Let's say we did a minus 17 from 
today's date. And this should work. This should take us to the end of last month. And if it does, I'll explain why. 31st. So, what this is doing, you've got the date add, and if you remember with the date add, if we look at it down here, it expects three parts. The, type, the, the element that we want to subtract or add, which is day in this case, how many of them, and from what date. So we're going to do today's date. We want to take away so many days. And basically, what we're doing here is we're taking away 17 days from today's date. So if you take 17 away from 17, you don't get zero. Well, obviously you do get zero, but when it comes to dates, you can't take 17 back from 17. What that does is it takes you back to the day before the start of the month, which is the end of the last month. So taking 17 days off the 17th of June will take you to the end of May. Regardless of that, whether it's, it could be, you know, obviously it's the 31st of May, but if this was July, 17th of July, and you took 17 days off the 17th of July, it would take you to the 30th of June, because that's the end of the month before. Nice and easy. Um, and that's how it kind of, that's how it's built, and that's how it works. Um, <clears throat> I have one more to show you, one more um, date to show you, I'm going to put this in here. I've copied it and pasted it from another window, done a bit of cheating really. I want to go to this start date and oh my goodness, don't ask me to explain this because it is a bit complicated but I will put it in the chat. What this will do is it will take you back to the first of the month seven months ago. So this should be the 1st of November, if I've got my maths right. There it is. I will put this bit of code. I have tried to kind of unpick it and get my head around it a little bit, but I think I just need a little bit more time. It's It's got all sorts of different bits and pieces um, that make it up, but eventually it does take you back seven months. Um, Alright, so the other thing that I wanted to do was, I want to insert a text box, and in this text box I'm going to put in, um, I'm going to put in, um, today is, and um, you've got this, again we've got this in here, format date and time, today. So if I run that, we should, if I make this a little bigger, we should get a text box that says the date is, and then it'll give you the date and time. Um, however, what you might want to do is, is format that. So let's just go back into here, look at the expression. And instead of that, we're going to choose to format. Uh, and now the image it's there. So it's actually, this is in text rather than date and time, but... Um, because we're doing it in text, we've got to convert it to a date. And this, in conversion, you've got this thing called C date. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, convert today. So this is um, we're casting uh, this value as a date, and then we're going to format it in. Let's think. We'll just do it as um, day day month month. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if I click OK on that, we should see it formatted. Now, I do have something that I want to show you here. So, let me just, there is a point kind of to be showing you this little bit here. So, when it comes to formatting, little d's, little y's, and the capital M, and I honestly don't know why that is. But if I change this to little m, See if that works. Uh, see, the, the, it, it doesn't work with a little. It's got to be capitals, and I don't, I don't really understand why that is. But what you can do, um, so I'll do the capitals again. When you've got two M's, it'll just return the number zero six. However, when you've got three M's, it will return for you the. Um, the abbreviated 
month. So June. And I think if I do four M's, it'll return for me the full month. Yeah, lovely. Uh, okay, that's the end of this video. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. Any comments and feedback would be appreciated. Thanks very much for your time. See you next time.